It does seem like we are closer to a deal than ever before, but there have been real problems with these talks over the last few months. What are the issues outstanding and how close are we to a deal? Yeah, well, like, I think the general consensus is we are much closer, certainly than we were uh, close to a year and a half ago when these negotiations in Vienna started to revive the agreement. Uh, but there are serious sticking points. Uh, there's questions about uh, the terms of sanctions relief. Uh, there's an issue of an ongoing IAEA probe. Uh, there is also the question from the Iranian side of whether there can be guarantees uh, that the U.S. won't withdraw again and whether the Europeans can bridge some of those gaps to provide assurances to the Iranians um, that they won't make these nuclear nuclear rollbacks and, and not get sanctions relief in return. So there are serious sticking points. The IRGC issue seems to be off the table, which is good news. And the um, scale and pace of negotiations has really sped up and the EU proposal has uh, presented what looks like a decision point and, and now uh, it's basically sitting in Washington to decide on what their response will be. Talia, we regularly speak with policymakers in the Middle East, in this part of the world, where I'm speaking to you from now. And the question that I have is, will an Iran nuclear deal make the region safer? It's interesting because you've also warned of possible crises that could emerge if we do see this deal taking place, including not just regional reactions, but other factors as well. Could you expand on that? Absolutely. Well, I think first it's important to note that it would be an important gain to get the nuclear deal back in place. It's important to get nuclear constraints back on Iran. Since the Trump administration left the deal in 2018, the status quo is incredibly dangerous right now. Iran is, is enriching uranium to 60 percent, very close to the level you need to make nuclear weapons if they should they decide to do so. Um, escalation, military escalation in the region has increased. Iran is lashed out. So we're in a very serious point. So it is important to get that back in the box, the nuclear program. And so this agreement would be a significant gain. But it absolutely is not a silver bullet. And I think we need to set realistic expectations about what will follow, even if we get this revived agreement. I think there's a couple of flashpoints we should look at. One is uh, there's going to be likely a staged implementation process. This was the case in 2015. It didn't, the uh, deal was not adopted overnight. It went over several months and it was six months until implementation. Lots of crises can emerge during that period. Uh, back in 2015, there was a direct line of communication between the U.S. and Iran. We do not have that today. In the past, that helped diffuse crises. Um, it, it, it's, we would have to depend on our allies to do that. And I think the other big wild card is the regional reaction. And you mentioned how, you know, the neighborhood is looking at this and they're very nervous about Iran, not because uh, only of their nuclear program, but of course their regional activities, particularly support for proxies and their precision guided missile development and drones. So I think that's gonna be a big focus in the neighborhood uh, should this deal move forward.